You should have picked up on this a little bit sooner. I should have. But again, I'm a Sagittarius. See, these things are not natural to me. They don't click. Like the first thing I missed or that I was two hours early on, I would have been like, yo, what's, what's going on? I was, in, I was in the dinner reservation, no joke, talking to the guy. Like, dog, I, I did set this for 8 o'clock, man. I mean, 6 o'clock. And it, wow. just, it just happened that way. Nah, it didn't click. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we live, all right, in three, two, one. What up, what up, people? It's uh, it's Travis here with his Start my skate over. night. And wait, Start over. <laughs> wait, why are we starting over? Because we had the, the, the ambience in the background. Oh, I'm sorry, we got a live studio. Because I said quiet on the set, and they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you haven't uh, noticed, that's Glenn right here. We got Lawrence over here. Say How what you up. doing? And we got Jameson remote and in live from Jersey. Say what up. What's up, up? And again, we got a live studio audience this morning. Make some noise. <laughs> Sound like there's a lot of people in here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's it's, up. It's literally two extra people. <laughs> <laughs> literally two. I had to pay my wife to be here. Courtney just, just happened up. to be <laughs> She just happened to be here, so yeah, we got a little live studio. Also, we're in a new studio. Like it seems like we changed. Oops. <laughs> Travis no, just can't take him nowhere. Travis just dropped the juice everywhere. Good thing my yeah. phone is waterproof. <laughs> By juice, I mean liquor. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, we're in a new studio audience. Uh, what are we gonna call this one? I. What was this? The loft. Is yours the loft? I don't know. We just said, no, no, mine is the flat. No, yeah. yours is the works the workshop. No, this is the flat. We said it's flat. flat. That, that changes our moves. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I like the loft. This is the penthouse. I like the penthouse. Oh, yeah, let's penthouse. yeah, penthouse. All right, yeah, we'll go with that. So just to give you guys a visual, we're on the 15th floor. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't know what floor. What floor are we on? This is seven. Seventh. We're on the seventh floor of. But it's uh, more like nine because it's two floors of. Uh, no, it's like the the. 10th floor. So we go and count floors like Trump <laughs> count floors on his uh, inflated floors of the Trump Towers. So technically we're on the like 7th, but we'll say the 15th floor. Downtown Baltimore. Got a nice uh, view of all the buildings, the lights and things like that. So it's real nice. Alternative facts. Alternative facts. Yeah, we'll go with the alternative facts. So 15th floor, y'all. Yeah. So yeah, as you might be able to tell, the pep in my step today, I'm live fresh off a of vacation from Arizona. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Shout outs to uh, Anthony and their crew, the Toe Stoppers, for putting on a nice event out there. Was it the same event from last? The, the Two last, years ago. The yep. one we went to? Mm-hmm. Yeah, same okay. one. Skatecation is, is the name of the event. Mm, that's cool. Dang, you ain't tell and, me you was going. Actually, I did. I told all of everybody where I was going. You said <laughs> that. I mentioned that in the last podcast. Nah, I literally said that in the last podcast. <laughs> yeah, but he be whispering. So he said in the podcast and it didn't say anything ever again. Like, That's not he true. Didn't ask nobody nothing. Like, Glenn, you, asked, you asked him about it and talked about tickets and whatnot. Oh, no. I know this because I just listened to the podcast like an hour ago. <laughs> this guy be dipping out on his old private skate trips and don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I told you this one was different. It was like a romantic getaway. That's exactly. It was, it was like it, a flood exactly, in my timeline. I was like, my goodness. That's exactly what happened. Like, I'm, 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 I told him, but I ain't really going to tell him. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, well, y'all wasn't going to go anyway. So, nah, I wasn't you know, going. Hey, yo, Lawrence, don't, don't F with anywhere that don't got uh, platinum wood floors. And Glenn, I don't know. You just was you just didn't want to go out. But anyway, so on on that vein, I am um, traveling. So I just figured we'd talk about a little bit of traveling. I know we've sort of briefly talked about the subject beforehand, but... Um, as uh, Glenn tell out to the artist to shut up. No, I was kidding. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've talked about the subject beforehand. Uh, we sort of glossed over traveling and the benefits of it and stuff like that. And um, I feel today we can just get into why is uh, why we may feel it's important for the skate culture to venture out to uh, skate sessions in, in different environments. Um, you know, just in general, um, just as a personal skater or uh, groups or whatever the case may be. Um, my first question would be, why do you, why you think it might be important or do you even think it's important to, to travel? I'm playing the devil's advocate. I feel Go like with YouTube and just uh, skate travel in general, I feel like people are kind of, uh, I feel like it's turning into one big skate style. Um, 
everybody's familiar with other type of skate styles, and I feel like it was very different. Even from when I first started skating, the only way you were able to see a JB skater if you went to Chicago or a very um, big event, a big skate event, you would never see JB skating at your local rink, you know, if you live, you know, down south or mm -hmm. wherever. Um, but I think, you know, just with the internet and Facebook and the ability to share video on your cell phone instantly, I feel like um, it's merging into like one skate style. One cesspool of skating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. So do you think it's, so So you, what you're saying is you don't necessarily think it's important for skaters because they have access to uh, the interweb? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely cool to be able to communicate and, and talk to people, um, but I think it's, I mean, it's always bigger mm -hmm. than skating. Um, you know, you get a glimpse of different cultures, different mm -hmm. lifestyles, different lingo, um, different foods. I, I always enjoy when we go to Chicago, like, you know, people in Chicago, you know, they love their city. They want to, what is it, those popcorn things? they like, you got to try the popcorn. Garrett's popcorn. Yeah, they, they're they like really big on it. So um, I, I definitely appreciate that, people trying to show you their city and, you know, show you different aspects of it, but it, it extends outside of the skate rink. Right, right, right. What do you think, Lawrence? Um, I, pre I appreciate the different styles. I mean, people learning the different styles. They, I mean, there's always going to be that level of you're not going to be able to perfect it unless you actually skate in that city. Mm -hmm. I always feel like there's always that missing piece from somebody that skates a different style outside of where they actually live. Um, yeah. It's just my two cents. Jameson, what you think? I mean, do you think it's important for uh, do you do you think it's important for skaters to travel outside of their city to branch out to these different skate jams? I mean, there's a few happening per month across the U.S. Actually, even internationally. Um, do you feel there's any benefit of uh, the travel? I I definitely think it is, and it's not just strictly looking at skate styles and exposure to them but the thing that i love about the skate culture is that it really is a subculture um you know both lawrence and myself are greek and so he can relate and understand this and actually glenn can kind of understand it too from me bringing him to events where it's like yo i didn't even know this world existed true there's a culture that exists that if you're not a skater or if you're not a skater who travels you have no idea Mm -hmm. you know, that it happens or that it's the, as big as it is. I don't, you have no idea how many times you've I've heard people say, dang, people still skate? Ah, I didn't even know that happened. I didn't even know people would still skate. Black people skate? Wow. You know, because... <laughs> and it's not disco? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and so there's that social aspect of it that I personally love. And I know that had I never traveled, had I never met the people that I've met from all the different parts of the country and, you know, in some instances, people that are from overseas, that would have completely changed my love for um, skating. In fact, I didn't fall in love with skating until I was out of town, technically, because I started skating in Baltimore. And the first skate jam, quote unquote, I went to was the first Thursday in Jersey. Yeah, so, my yeah. life. <laughs> you know, that that changed my outlook on on skating all together. All them chicks that could skate in stretchy pants, it was, <laughs> you know, it, it was a different experience. It was definitely not looking like that in Baltimore at the time. <laughs> so, so, you know, that that's important. People have a different experience when they're out of town. I, I, I agree. And to piggyback on that, I think it's definitely important for the skate culture for uh, for some, for the various reasons you guys just mentioned, uh, but also, I mean, like you said, like we said, you get the experience of not only just the skating. I mean, you know, as it's my skate night travels throughout the uh, these uh, states, we sort of are like the apostles, even though we are in the skate community. So we're sort of preaching to the choir, but it also gives us an opportunity to hear and get our like finger on the pulse of what's going on and things that uh, you know skaters might want. Um, or and, and just in general, us getting a, or I would say me personally, just getting a feel for like, for instance, I I probably don't skate locally as much as I'd like to, but when I go out of town and skate, I feel. Wait, 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 wait. Longer, why you don't let Travis come skating? 
Because <laughs> since she's here, I just want to know. Because like, okay. like, I can't come outside. Y'all. We ain't starting no problems. <laughs> okay, you're right, you're right. All right, oh, no, 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 no. Let's, let's go ahead and start some problems because when we be texting, Laundra's in the background right now, my wife. And, uh, and, and she's basically uh, withheld me from skating. I'm just kidding. She hasn't withheld me from skating, y'all. Yeah. However, I do feel obligated. You better to fix it up. Home. You know better. Right. He's I do stuttering, feel. Y'all. I, I, He's stuttering. <laughs> stuttering and backtracking now. I'm just kidding. You know who he started doing that. Oh, that's what it boils down to. Oh, oh she skate too. She's like, let's go skate. No, babe, let's stay in the okay. house. It's warm in here. <laughs> you know what? And that's how it would be. That's exactly how it would be. And, you know, she, she sucked me into the couch with the Netflix thing. And then when I'm leaving, it's like them puppy eyes. Like, so, so, so you really going to go skate? And I'm like, wait, we used, this is how we met. What's going on here? It was, a, it was the hook oh, and bait. That's interesting. It is interesting. Maybe we can get into a whole another conversation about yeah. skate partners and add stuff that, like yeah, that. Yeah, either add it to the end of this conversation or make that an, another podcast. Okay, we're trying to make it to four hours of phone, so that might be another podcast. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, but um, where was I? Y'all, y'all threw me off track with that. You know, y'all... I have no clue. So anyway, it is important. To... Yeah, so it is important to go skating. And like I said, when I go out, I get re-energized, <clears throat> excuse me, for you know just being around the skaters different type of skate styles. I love learning new things, obviously, and that's one of the biggest, I feel, benefits for me personally to traveling is, you know, for one, you get the different skate styles. Like Lauren said, I mean, you're gonna get sort of a sampler of everything that you can go and then emulate. I got a story. I remember my first time going to uh, Millennium Dude, Skate. Story. <laughs> Millennium Skate Jam and up Millennium, and you know, they do fast backwards like professionals. I mean, that's like, they're professionals. You know, I've seen it a little bit before I went there here in Baltimore. I really didn't understand it until I saw it in Millennium. That's because it was medium backwards. <laughs> exactly. It was like medium backwards. Kind of so, going forward a little bit. Kind of. Right. <laughs> right. And then so I saw that and I really liked that style. So I came back to Shake and Bake and I will never forget this. I was struggling, <laughs> struggling trying to get it. I mean, I looked like a fish out of water. And then Glenn came up like, yo, what are you doing? Like, what? what, what is, what is this? <laughs> what is this? I'm like all the way in the middle of the rink trying to get fast backwards. <laughs> Knowing damn well I should be at the wall, you know, or whatever. And then Glenn sort of like was like, all right, let me show you like actually how it's done on deep with your feet and, and up against the wall and stuff. So um, so that was my uh, my experience with fast backwards. But also, like I said, to give you that the sampler to, uh, you know, get, get different skate styles. Mm-hmm. And then um, the environment. Um, as we mentioned, like just coming into this, I'm fresh back from Arizona where it was like 70, 80 degrees and here out there where it's like super cold here. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I've started to do when going on a skate trip is try to venture a little bit outside the bubble because it do give you the opportunity or that excuse to travel. Um, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times I see skate jams and just see that as like a mini vacation. Mm. Um, and I think that's another thing that appeals to some of the skaters, you know, um, it's just that it's a thought of getting away temporarily, even though it is a skate session, but you're in a new environment. And so I try to take advantage of that new environment. So, yeah, I imagine there's some skaters who plan their whole, you know, work schedule and, you know, vacation time around skate trips. So it's like their one time out of the year to really you know, do a vacation, so. That's true. Yeah. So, you're a Sagittarius, Glenn. Okay. We're born on the same day. I'm yeah. a Sagittarius. I don't know how it is with you, but with me and planning, <laughs> it's not the best thing to go around. See, look at Laundra. She looks, she's shaking her head. She already know where I'm about to go with this. I got something else to get out. This, I don't know if this is going to be a confession, but I got something to get off my chest. <laughs> this is a regular confession or a skate confession? Skate confession. No, that is just a skate confession. So we go to, I, this is my first time ever planning anything. Like most of the time, I'm just going with the flow. Mm-hmm. I spent, uh, <laughs> <laughs> shut up, Lawrence. <laughs> like I literally rely this, on Lawrence for like. Uh, this explains a lot. Now when you bring it into the whole astrological <laughs> aspect, that's not a word, but let's, let's put that up. Like I'm okay. still, I'm still okay, asking, no. I'm still asking Lawrence what's the date for our skate jam. <laughs> but anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> so I'd spend all this time planning this trip. You know, you know, we're gonna do a nice dinner on the first night. We're gonna do this. Then we're gonna go to the skate jam. We're gonna go to the meet and greet. Then we're gonna go outside the meet and greet. Go climb, rock climbing, blah blah blah. All this stuff. What had happened was Jack Daniels. Oh yeah, don't mind if I do. 
Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, so what had happened was I planned all this stuff. I have the itinerary. You know, most skate jams have the itinerary out and ready to rock and roll. I plan it to the T, to the absolute T. We get there and we just kept arriving at everything two hours early. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Everything like we get to the meet and greet, no one's there. We get to bowling, no one's there. We get to the reservations for my uh, dinner. They like, sorry, <laughs> sir, it's actually eight o'clock, not six o'clock. I'm like, what the f- what's going on here? It didn't occur to me until. What is the time difference? Yes. Wow. It, well, see, what happened was I planned it all on a Google Calendar got it, at got Eastern it. Standard Time, and it <laughs> it matched perfectly. <laughs> It matched perfectly, but when I got in the whatever Arizona standard desert standard time, right, which I, changes, yeah, it changed everything up. So yeah, that nah, was that. Don't don't um don't feel bad about that. Like um I've done that uh before, but like I guess in the past. But I um just for work, like I, I travel between different time zones like a lot. Mm-hmm. So it's like I have like all the different calendars and clocks in my phone. So. With an iPhone, you can have multiple clocks depending on what time zone you're in. So I have like mm-hmm. basically from here to like Abu Dhabi, like <laughs> all the time zones in my phone. Uh, also, another thing that I that helps me with that is um, I operate on the 24 hour clock or military time for some people. So okay. it kind of helps me keep things like in check. You know what I mean? How so? Um, well, one, it's like if it's 6 a.m. something, mm-hmm. you know it's not. It's either 6 a.m. or Oh, okay, uh, I got you. Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, 6 p.m. Or, or 1800 hours. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, um, okay. So that kind of helps me, but I, but I understand like how how that could be a thing. So that's a tip for you guys. If you if you <laughs> if you plan to go out of town on one of these skate trips and you think you're going to get all romantic and all this extra <laughs> stuff and plan, so make sure you in the right time. Your reservation was for yesterday. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and laundry in the back. You mother. You can't get nothing right. So <laughs> You can't do nothing right. We sit here two hours. I'm like, but I mean, it's right. For what? You complain because I'm late now. You complain because I'm early. Oh, no. man. You That's, can wait, like that. So your phone don't change the time? Like It changed the time, but, but all my timing would change it. two hours yeah. previous. So, yeah, it's, it's so I was setting it here in Eastern Standard Time for 8 o'clock. When I got there, everything changed over. So now my reservations was at 6 o'clock in my phone <laughs> when it still was supposed to be 8 o'clock in whatever time zone I'm in. Right. It took me a while to figure this out because every early. time I... I don't know. It, it literally did. I feel like you should have picked up on this a little bit sooner. I should have. But again, I'm a Sagittarius. See, these things are not natural to me. They don't click. Like the first thing I missed or that I was two hours early on, I would have been like, yo, what's, what's going on? I was, in, I was in the dinner reservation, no joke, talking to the guy like, dog, I, I did set this for 8 o'clock, man. I mean, 6 o'clock. And it wow. just it just happened that way. Nah, it didn't click. I understand that. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, that's throwing us off on a tangent. But that's that's one of the things I look forward to doing nowadays. Is just going, and that might be speaking to my age. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you guys think. Do you think that might be a little different with younger skaters? Is is it just straight about strictly about the skate jam and it? That's it. Yeah, I don't know. I you gotta speak to some young skaters. You, know, well, I, you was I'm young when old. you skate started, right? You, I'm I, old now. I, 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 <laughs> I try to remember back to like my first skate jams. Um, Yo, like, uh, time out, time out. Glenn, you still are a younger skater, dude. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I still can't. He's like, I can remember way so back to my uh, last <laughs> year when I was at my. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, but when I've really, really started, like, um, just, you know, going back to what you were saying, Jay, about, you know, how your first skate party kind of opens your eyes. And I was kind of lucky uh, to be a skater in Baltimore because we had something a lot of people don't remember, but we had a, a one to four session. I mean, what was it? 11 to t- uh, uh you mean 11 to... Uh, that was 11 to two session. We had 11 to two. That Saturday night and, train. That was and, golden. Um, golden. It was like once, once a month, it was 11 to four. And mm-hmm. that was like a skate party I remember that. by itself. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. everybody from the East Coast coming up from down south, coming up from up north or whatever. So we were kind of lucky to be able to experience that. But my first out town, out of town experiences uh, was when I went to Delaware. And I just saw like some of the most amazing skating that I've ever seen. Like, you know, the old school cats like yeah. Tex and um, Ice and a lot of those old, I'm not going to say old because that sounds bad, but a lot of the, you know, experience. The, man, whatever, the more seasoned skaters, Season, yeah. when they were like 
in their prime, I feel like that sounds bad too, but when they were like really <laughs> like you know skating what? like they old. <laughs> <laughs> they old. No, man, no, man, no, you know, big up big up to the to the um No disrespect. No, no disrespect, <laughs> but your ass old enough. Okay. <laughs> the season skaters, I remember um, sk- um watching Life Skate and um just a lot of really, really great skaters mm-hmm. and it was um Ellesmere. Okay. And the rink was like mad small, and that's another place where you know I saw fast backwards. And I remember, I never forget it. Ellesmere, they would they would get out the car like they they would have somebody drop them off, and they would already have their skates on. What's so the they f- would just get out the car that's serious. and go into the skate ring with their skates on. And I just thought that was the most like getting a little momentum to get into the ring. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if it's because they didn't want to you know get their Jordans stolen or whatever. <laughs> oh, or they just couldn't wait to get on the floor, but they would get out the car and go right into the rink with their skates on, and they would wear those like um, speed skates. So if you think you fast backward is backwardsing in some Rydells, watch them, them young boys on the speed skates. Um, you know they probably they don't exist anymore because yeah, because Elsmere is gone. <laughs> <laughs> right? But um, but yeah, I, I definitely remember, um, and I definitely enjoyed. Uh, Warp speed. <laughs> Warp speed. <laughs> In another dimension now. <laughs> and, and so, um, just to touch on Ellesmere again, I think that was also one of the first times where I heard different type of music, mm-hmm. you know, other than, you know, the DC right. uh, Maryland music. And um, it really stuck out to me and it just kind of just blew my mind, just that tempo, mm-hmm. you know, being a little different from what I was used to, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you guys? Yep. Go ahead. Can I backtrack and just yeah. um, back to Arizona? Like, no, yeah, what, what, <laughs> what? What did you learn from that? What did you learn from that skate trip? Like, for a skater like me that doesn't go to cities that don't have wood floors, like, what would you? Um, Mm-hmm. Would you recommend that trip to me? Like, can you give me a review? Is basically what I'm asking. Sure, I absolutely can give you a review, and I can give you some recommendations. You sound real regimented right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for one, if you aren't into wood floors, it definitely is something that you would have to really get yourself into. I can tell you, my legs and knees was like, you know, it was definitely leg day. I gotta tell you that because you know, with the polyurethane or whatever, whatever that is. That is it's like it's literally like skating on rubber like you really don't have to do much to have your uh, skates grip the floor and things like that Mm. so in that aspect for me i'm a versatile skater it really doesn't necessarily bother me that i don't skate on wood i prefer skating on wood (laughs) so it don't necessarily bother me if i'm not um the you know everyone i think the hospitality and everything like that was great but in terms of like what i recommend to skate jam i absolutely would and i would specifically recommend it for um, skaters of the East Coast region, which kind of bridged the gap into my next topic, into how we get, you know, the momentum of uh, people who are in the West to come to the East, East to the West, and, and a little bit more mobility that way. Um, you know, I think I think a lot of times it's really hard to take that leap because the music is so different. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, for somebody coming from New York, Philly, uh, even Baltimore. And then going to straight up, you know, L.A. Or, or Arizona or places like the Midwest where the tempo is just not as fast. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think I give it a pretty good review because he, uh, Anthony and their crew, they've reached out to what would appeal to the skaters on uh, this coast, uh, which is a uh, DJ. Uh, I think they have uh, Wild Child and uh, Fly Tie. Um, and you know, and a couple other DJs also. Not, no disrespect that I'm not mentioning their names, but those are ones that I know that sort of spend a little bit more up tempo music. So um, I really enjoyed that. Um, but then again, it goes into more than just the actual skate culture. Even though they, I, I missed it by two hours, the bowling. <laughs> um, but from all accounts and reviews I've seen on the bowling and and then the social aspect that they've. Uh, cultivated there um, in terms of the meet and greet. I did get there an hour early for that one, but I got, I stayed, I stayed. Um, you know, they had like little things going on where it was refreshing to see some icebreakers. There was like this paper thing, like a paper bingo. You get the, you have to find all these facts and actually talk to people that you didn't know to get the facts and things. So there was a lot of refreshing small details that I, I enjoy. And there was, uh, again, the sort of, a piece of home there as well. well not necessarily home because I'm not from Jersey but I, a piece of what I like in uh, music there um, and there was also versatility with like you know different music hmm. let's uh, talk about that like that icebreaker thing I think that's pretty cool because I, I think about it like I've probably met like thousands of people mm-hmm. over the years skating but I only know like 
20 by name. Exactly. <laughs> you know what oh I'm saying? God. So it's like, I think that was really cool to them to like mm-hmm. really switch it up and um, and get people to talk to different people. Because yeah. I, I find myself speaking to the same people mm-hmm. on every skate trip. I mean, I mean, it's just, na- it's only natural for you to go into your comfort zone anywhere. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, um, especially when you like away from home and everything. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, so, yeah, by being there, I mean, you know, I, I knew already a lot of people um, and from just from the skate world, but also kind of like on a name basis. But there's a lot of people that I got to meet and things like that. So it was, it was kind of refreshing. Um, so to give you an answer, I, I would definitely recommend it for uh, anyone who's traveling, especially from the East Coast, because it's a whole different feel, not just the skating, not just, you know, uh, the meet and greet and the the, so, the skating culture, but as you, Lawrence, said earlier, I was flooding the timelines. There's a lot other things to do outside of that, so I would recommend get there maybe a day or so early to explore, as with any other jam, um, explore. Uh, and that would actually bring me to my other topic, which was, what do you guys think are um, major things that will motivate someone to get to a skate jam that is... Uh, you know, not like completely not what they're used to in their local rink. Like, say, for instance, you know, we're used to skating fast or you're in the Midwest and it's an East Coast jam. Like, what do you think some of the things, what, what do you think would uh, pull those people to make that commitment to spend some money for hotel, travel, mm-hmm. tickets and all that stuff to get there? I, I could chime in um, <clears throat> just quickly. Um, I think it's about getting comfortable with different skate styles and the reason why you know i love the way the west coast skates especially with you know the really slippery slide oh yeah yeah yeah. Slippery I, arrows. yeah yeah like they like for those who don't know like people on the west coast or at least some of them they shave they grind their wheels down to like the size of a Mom's nickel got some of those. she got a pair uh, i'm breaking them out this week yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, got, he got a pair uh, uh, he, he, can't, stuff, no. he can't stand up there, <laughs> but you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> he stand on the carpet. Hey, let, let me give you a visual. He be a, he the guy in the rink with his uh, one one leg up on the wall. You know, got an all white suit on. <laughs> let me just wipe these off right quick. <laughs> so 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 just to add to that. So usually like there there are the shoes are very dressy, like Stacy mm-hmm. Adams. You know, real you know patent leather. You know, just real smooth. And when you think of like or they light up excessively. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I've seen a lot of light ups. I don't know what it is, but Ex- extra they, they like the LEDs over there. I don't know what it is. So <laughs> Some light beams, like you will know they're there. Right, sorry. it's like a light show. Yeah, man. So it's um, but I I definitely appreciate it, and I I've seen some really amazing um great skaters on those wheels I, I don't know how they stand up but it's it's really amazing to see so I think it's um embracing that kind of style and not being afraid to to try it because once you think about it you know the music kind of has to be slow yeah. <laughs> you know for, for those type of wheels just the kind of groove that they have and I think just um appreciating and um and just kind of um, embracing that groove and it's hard to do, you know, Travis earlier was talking about stepping outside of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you can do that, you can go to the West Coast and have a really, really great time. But if you go over there thinking you're going to be listening to up-tempo house all weekend, you're going to be very disappointed. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's real true. What do you uh, think, Jameson? <clears throat> well, I want to add to that because, uh, one, uh, the West Coast wheels, they're not just shaved down. They're free ball bearings. Right. Um, right. The right. trucks are different. Like every. You know, I you know y'all already know I'm not the dude to pay attention to mm-hmm. the details of a skate. But when I was out there, like I stayed out there a few months and was at the rink as well. I was at the rinks plural mm-hmm. um, as often as possible. Sadly, every single rink I used to go to out there has closed down since. Oh man! Um, but I learned a lot about like the style, the culture, the culture out, there. out there, and yeah. it's it's very different. Um, but it's like you said, it's very interesting. It's very, it's something that you definitely want to see firsthand. And I, I don't think that the West Coast itself, like California or at least Southern California, they don't have a slow groove to theirs. It just, the music is just different. Mm-hmm. Um, what they do at their ranks is just different. Like I think the whole the slower tempo is more of a Midwest, like center, you know, Central American thing, mm-hmm. like like Ohio, like you know, Cincinnati and all them. Like they have that. Or not, not even St. Louis. They have like a slower, Louis. slower bounce, a slower groove. Really, um, Cali is more of a heavier bounce. Like you got mm-hmm. like that bounce music that people are really into. The and then they do that ring around the rosy shit. The upper um, body be moving, but the legs be just yeah. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> be straight, like. Uh, oh. Um, <laughs> but um, um, sorry to backtrack, but I want to make mention to it. Mm. I think age plays a, a a major factor in what you do at a skate jam because you kind of left that open that question oh, open yeah, to yeah. you know what do people go for? Um, what motivates people at the skate jams, or what will push them to come across the country to go to an event? Um, something I noticed since, you know, since the beginning of me skating to just all the way through with, with traveling with you guys. Um, when I first started, <clears throat> I was in my mid twenties and Glenn is in his early twenties. Um, like Travis, he was like, he was like 40, like 18, 17. Like um, just got right. his driver's license. But, but, but I noticed that me and Glenn and Travis as well, but Travis was kind of low key, especially like when he was doing the Count Chocula thing. Um, <laughs> Wait, the what? what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, All right, come on. But, All right. Hey, 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 y'all gonna go there. Right. Uh, that, that, the that was episode. that. Um, but uh, when he's not, you know what I mean? When he's Live. not like booed up, shout out. Uh, Alondra. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but when he's not booed up, he's with us. Right. And for the, like a, at least the first half of the skate jams we ever went to, we would all be together and Lawrence would be gone. <laughs> like we we would be in attendance um, at every single hotel party, right. meet and greet, bowling, laser tag, whatever whatever the the hosts are producing, we're gonna be at. Mm -hmm. Um, just, just because, because you want to be around, you want to be around the skaters. skaters. You be there for the skate experience. Um, and I always used to wonder, I'm like, yo, why is he going to the mall? Like, the fuck is the mall? <laughs> we all the way down. We drove 13 hours, and he at the mall. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he he going to see the town. Why? We here to skate. Like, you know. And so, you know, and that's always been what Lawrence does. Like the old head of the group. <laughs> right. You got me. You got me sipping coffee at the vintage shop. <laughs> Right, yeah, I've been there, been right. There. This man, like, this I, man is there to go to like the the tea festival. Right. <laughs> no. So Jay, you can kind of relate to this. So like when you first started like going to Greek uh, events, like uh, conclave or whatever you guys, whatever you guys call it, I'm not sure. But it's like like for example, when I first started going to Greek stuff, like all I did was stay in the hotel, go to those Greek events, and don't never went out and I actually saw the city. That was when I was like 18, 19, 20. You know early ages now like no nah, i want to if i'm traveling all the way to chicago i want to see chicago a little I, bit i agree with lawrence i think that i've transitioned into that phase as well like when i go and i think yeah. that's why yeah. i appreciate skate jams <clears throat> in a different way like last time where i went to arizona the skating you know because you know it wasn't up to my par or whatever but it's my first well, it was my second it was my second time in arizona and i love like the city i love the 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 nature and the landscape and everything so i definitely so go phoenix yeah, yeah, yep. So, so um, I, I, I think... Well, I, well mm -hmm. go ahead, James. That was my point. Yeah. Early on, mm -hmm. we were there to do everything that was related yeah. to the skate event. Yeah, we made some now, videos about that. Now, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm with Lawrence, like, yo, we out. Yeah. Like, we get there, it's like, all right, cool, yo, we hitting them all, all right, bet, let's yep. go. Yep. Uh, because, you know, it transitions, and, and as you become a more seasoned skater... And I don't think it, it's a hundred percent about age, but it's how often you've gone to different events. Yeah, um, you know who's gonna be there, right? You, you know you're there to see the different skaters, but you don't need to be at every single thing because you already know what's gonna happen. Right. Like you kind of been there, done that mm -hmm. enough times to be like, I'm good. We what we in what city? All right, well let's go see what this city has to offer. Mm -hmm. This is actually a good sort of point that. I guess it's sort of like an evolution of a skater, travel travel skater. I mean, you start off at a local rink. I mean, you start off skating, learning or whatever, whether mm -hmm. you come in with whatever level of experience you come in with. Mm -hmm. And then you, for some reason, are opened up to the uh, possibility of traveling. And it might start, you know, in a vicinity, maybe like the next state over or whatever. And then as you sort of open up to that, the different experiences and the music and the culture and the meet and greets and festivals, because at first it can be overwhelming, but then you get into a groove and you're with it. You know what the events are. You're doing it. You've met a lot of people. And then I think, I wouldn't say you burn out of that because a lot of people, they just die hard partiers for that. They live, they live for the skate jams. 
um, meet and greet. But I think for a lot of skaters, they sort of uh, transition to a point. Okay, I've been there. I've done that several years in a row. What else? I still want to come to this event. I still want to come to this city. What else is there? And that what else is whatever that city has to offer. And I think, again, what pulls people to come to these places over and over is not just exactly, you know, the meet and greet and the skate culture for people who are seasoned. We're looking for what else does your city have to offer? What else is there for us to do? Like for me, I've been to Arizona once. I love this. You know, I like the jam and I love, you know, the environment. But that was sort of the the thing that sort of pushed me over the edge of going back and spending an investment of money to go from east to west um, was the uh, the scenery, the you know the, cult, the everything else around skating, the outside, the outer shell of it, I should say. So sort of like the uh, skate jam is the catalyst to get there, but everything else is old head stuff, as we would probably say. <laughs> mm. So yeah, definitely, definitely, all good information. And you want to add anything to that? Sacramento yet? Yeah. I haven't, but that's one that's, that I, I mean, would love if you, to go if to. You feel like, if you feel mm-hmm. like Phoenix is someplace you should go to enjoy Phoenix and actually skate, mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, I like Sacramento's party. One, because it's close to San Francisco. And so mm-hmm. what I did was I went to Sacramento, skated, and then went to mm-hmm. uh, San Francisco and spent some time there and hung out and did, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, you know, I, I like um, kind of weird stuff sometimes and went on the jelly <laughs> bean factory tour oh, wow. you know it, it just oh, wow. factory tours i like factory tours oh, okay like so, how it's made yeah, yeah. let me tell you about lawrence he's, he's like the ultimate so, like you know i'll do stuff like person. that so like <laughs> i like northern cali better than southern california For that's real? that's my personal opinion uh-huh. out of out of you know those two different different worlds and if you want to put it that way but um so yeah sacramento was cool for skating mm-hmm. if you if you're looking to do to do both Mm-hmm. Um, especially the city of San Francisco, um, hanging out there is, is fun as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I definitely would love to go there. Um, again, just in general, I mean, one thing that I've noticed too is international travelers. I don't know what they do for a living, especially Skate Lisa, because she just sort of randomly pop up at like a lot of events around the country. Like, right. you know, I'm like, yo, what you do? I want to figure out what's going on. But, um, you know, she told me one thing that I feel like, was a really good point she said when we was rapping at the uh, arizona skate jam meet and greet she was saying um you know a lot of people you know got a lot you know expensive phones you know expensive cars and 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 all this other stuff they have to take care of um yeah that's right you're hearing sirens on the 15th floor (laughs) Uh, but they got all these things going on for them she said she skate to i mean she basically uh lived to travel Mm. Which essentially meant to me, she, you know, she, or what she told me, she basically don't get all these things that she don't necessarily need. She keep it light mm-hmm. so that she can travel, right. which is why we see her at a lot of jams. And I think that sort of attitude is, um, I, I really like that philosophy. I mean, if you feel like you, you're, you like to travel and things like that, you know, you got to make some adjustments at yeah. times to get to some of these jams. Yeah. So make it a priority. Yeah. You know, make some down payments into a savings account or something, you know, right. nickel every paycheck. <laughs> no, not even that. I feel like we spend a, a lot of money on things that that's we true. like just don't use, you know what I mean? Right. So, um, and right. that could be a plane ticket. Like, you know, I'll shoot, I just did my taxes. I'm like, man, I spent my, <laughs> that's, that's like four plane tickets I could have spent, yep. you know what I'm saying? Yep. On, on stuff that's not really important. So, um, so yeah, I, I agree with Skate Lisa in, in yeah. that regard. Food is a major sinkhole for money. You don't know. <laughs> like literally, if you if you're going if you work a nine to five and you eat out like every day, really yeah. count your money. Yeah, That's, adds up, you've man. already spent a, several skate jams in <laughs> maybe one month. You better uh, pack a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> they go a long way. Exactly. Shoot. Exactly. Yeah, man. But yeah, I think all this was good information. I feel like um, if anyone else, anyone got any confessions or anything else to add? I've done the confessing on uh, my skate. Um, Sins, I guess. Huh. You've done it? I've done enough uh, confession. Oh, you've done enough confession. He must be getting emails because he's he, he like, I, I'm good. I'm good on this. I'm trying to think, do I got any skate confessions? You do. Do you have any that you want to share? It's the point. It's the point. Yeah. We already know you I got some stuff. We, we've traveled a lot with each other, and we know too much about each other's personal business. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> do you want to share, my brother? No, nah, I, don't, I don't got anything that I want to oh, share right okay. now. <laughs> Not, maybe next time. Next, next time, next folks. Time. Yeah. I didn't really think if about you, it. If you want to hear Escape from Confession from Glenn, please write <laughs> Woo, in. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, just, just it's, let us know. It's my skate night dot com. Maybe you convince him. Right, yeah. But anyway, we if you uh you know enjoying the show, you have any questions, comments, concerns, etc., um, hit us up at it's my skate night. We on all social medias. Instagram, man, skate Facebook. relationships don't work, man. They like unicorns, man. I I, I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said a unicorn. I beg to differ. You are the one uh, person out of like thousands <laughs> of people of men and women that have made it work out. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you are the rare Anomaly. I'm gonna wear anomaly. Yeah, huh? but it's it's all good. Go ahead, Jay. Huh? It's a. It's a good. <laughs> oh, I got my wife over there oh, saying it's a good pop. She she agreeing with me. She know. Oh, okay. You mean that topic is a good pop? Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Oh, well, like relationships or making skate relationships work or no, what? They don't work. I just married. Oh yeah. Oh okay. So okay. basically, she's saying Travis just got lucky. <laughs> Typically, it doesn't work. Hey, look, I, I bottle, <laughs> bottle <laughs> brag. <laughs> right. She said, "Oh no, they don't work." <laughs> I'm just the shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we got Jameson, his wife skate kind of right. Wait, what? Oh, no, no. <laughs> kind of skates a little bit. Alternative facts. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, I just saw her at the but, rink. That's so right. yes, you see, you've seen her at the rink. Uh, she, 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 she's uh, she, she she's picked, like she's, a chauffeur. she's she's friends. She's friends of the skate family because her father skates. Her father is a skater. Okay. Um, you know, her sister skates mm-hmm. more often. She can skate, but she's not a skater. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, okay. Yeah. skaters know her. That's a that, sidebar. Okay. That's a, that's one a good thing about um, I have to say on the family side of things, mm. it's a good thing about like the skate world. <clears throat> when they know you're in a relationship, they know you're married. Like people at the rink, yeah, they true. True. they make it very very easy for you to stay faithful because <laughs> they they hey how you do how's your wife Yo! how's your daughter what's going on with them oh man tell them I said hi. Yeah. You not being a trifling nothing is, is that at the skate rig, it's like especially up here, because I've seen all kind of ratchetry in Baltimore. Right, right, but right. like up here, Love like the they 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 associate you with your family. They associate yeah, you with true. you know yeah. what's your value, what's valuable to you. Yeah, and I think that's dope. That's cool. Let me jump in on that because I, I can definitely attest to that as a person who shares a lot of stuff on Facebook to uh, promote uh, the beauty of marriage. <laughs> they ain't gonna let this. They they will not let this union part. I can tell you that right now. If if we going through some things and it, it show up at the rank, they gonna like, hold on, baby. Let me take you to the side, baby. What's going on, baby? Tell me what's going on. Oh, man, people but, root uh, for y'all, man. I'm yeah. root for y'all. Everybody root for you. I'm like, if 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 this, if this don't work, then I can just give up. Like, <laughs> I, I, seriously, like if if this don't make it, then. Uh, it's, it's no point. But, you know, no pressure. No, pre- no right, pressure. Right. Exactly. So it's, it's happening. your happiness. My happiness relies on the happiness of your relationship. So just remember that. That's so funny. Oh man. But yeah, I feel like this is definitely a, a, a good topic to sort of like, you know, sort of um, make a whole podcast on. So next one, escape relationships. Escape relationships. I oh, think man. we've glossed over it. Have plenty of, of confession. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know Glenn love the crazies. <laughs> You know. No, I had I had an epiphany. Yeah, we about to go um get our dance on, but I had an epiphany the other day. The only reason y'all think all of my exes are crazy is because, because they were crazy. No, because okay. you only hear about the crazy ones. You never hear about the ones who weren't crazy because they kind of get swept. We don't under hear the rug. about them because Wait, you let them go. Like too like early who? Because they're not crazy. Like hold on, hold on. Like like who? <laughs> huh? Like who, Glenn? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> name, 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 name. Listen, I've, I've met some nice women's that I let go on unf- like Travis said maybe because I was premature prematurely let go you're mm-hmm. right you're right mm-hmm. um a matter of fact I'm thinking that this is my skate confession right here oh, go for it um I met a skater oh. she was amazing right uh-huh. and um and I and I let it go because it's like I I felt like I couldn't trust her mm-hmm. but I was projecting that onto her, mm. but, 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 I think she was still dealing with her ex at the time. Think. I know she was still dealing with her ex at the time. You didn't confirm that before you yeah, I confirmed because okay. I had a conversation with her, okay. and I finally got it out of her. 
Okay. But besides all of that, I mean, I'm sure she's not dealing with him anymore. She was a really, really great girl. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just let that, um, just let that kind of slide by. Yeah. I mean, well. Damn, homie. Damn, it be, homie. It be like that. I, it I, be I may, like that. I may, maybe I dodged a bullet. You never well, know. let me tell you something. Life is all about experiences and mistakes and, and learning and growing from them. Um, you've definitely grown mature Man, a little bit. It's not Glenn. a mistake unless it's permanent. <laughs> <laughs> That's my motto. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that too. That's cool. I like that. I'm happy you yeah, put, put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> that is true. All right. Yeah. Well, I think it's about that time. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. Like I said, I think this is a great place. This is a good energized place to hopefully get you, bait you guys into uh, listening to the next podcast. Um, again, skate relationships. I think we can uh, all attest to some part of that. I mean, we'll we'll see how much we'll discuss off air how much we want to share. <laughs> Ain't that right, babe? She over there like I don't know. Man. I'm gonna have to be here for this one. It's gonna be a punch list of stuff you can't talk about. Right, we bullet, bullet, bullet points. <laughs> However, if you would like to hear, uh, if you would like to for us to address specific questions, please feel free to hit us up at, at it's my skate night. Um, what was it? Uh, Gmail. Yeah. It's my skate night at gmail.com. Or, like normal or, people on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. Um, don't hit us up on Twitter because we don't tweet. That bird's still in the cage. What about um Instagram? Instagram. 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 All the social medias except for um, Twitter. Right. So for your super explicit personal questions, make sure you uh, go to the DM. Don't yeah. put it on the wall because yeah. it might get missed. Also, um, <laughs> if you like to remain anonymous, you can do so. We have this technology called Not Speaking Your Name. And yeah. um, and just let us know you want to be anonymous if you have questions for us. But uh, that's what's up, Jameson. Right. Yo, yep, you st- still there? Yeah, you was. Yeah, Jameson fell asleep on the last part. He's like, all right, <laughs> just catch, catch me on the next one. <laughs> right. right. This, this, this is our wrap up here. You got any last closing sage wisdoms or words? Are you excited about the next one or what? What's up? Nah. Uh, okay. okay. I'm just happy to be here. All right. Uh, in the game. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there in spirit. Uh, I'm sad I'm missing uh, four hours of fun. Nah, it's all good. good. But, you know, you guys have fun for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, that's what's up. So, Jameson from Jersey, thanks uh, for calling in, of course. You know, our brother from another. And uh, we out. Peace. Later.